<laughs> and then we'll just uh, we'll review a little bit, and then we'll kind of we'll advance forward a little step from where we were. So we talked about factoring a bunch last week, right? You had some practice. There's some assignment stuff that have to do with factoring. And when it comes to factoring, there really are two processes that I've, I've had you practice. There's factoring out greatest common factors. So for example, if I gave you something like this, how about? Um, I want you to factor out the greatest common factor. Take a second. Think about that. I want you to have, well, get out your notebooks. Let's see if we can come up with this. Okay. Now, you know what this is going to look like. When you factor this, That whole expression is going to break apart into some greatest common factor and then some stuff that's left over. Factoring out a greatest common factor, remember, is essentially just undistributing the biggest thing that you can. Right? You want to break it up into, in your mind, and on paper, you can break the process up into two parts. You've got the number, right? What's the greatest common numerical factor, the biggest number that divides into each term, and then the variable stuff, right? What's the biggest power of x that I could take away from all three of those? So take a second and we'll see what we can answer. talk about this. What's, what's the biggest number that divides into all three of those numbers? Three. Does that make sense? Three? So three goes into three, six, and twelve, so I will undistribute or factor out three. And then, okay, what about, okay, look, what, what's, what's the biggest power of x that I could take away from all three? A fourth. So the fourth, right? Does that make sense? Because that's the smallest of the three powers. I can only strip away from each term as much as the weakest term can give me, which is an x to the fourth. Both of these other terms have potential. I could, you know, they have bigger powers of x than that. They could give me more, but this one can't. And I'm limited by, I can only take as much as each one of them can give me, right? Okay, so, so I could factor out then. and x to the fourth. And now, what am I left with if I do that? OK, well, let's, let's look at the numbers first. What's going to be the number that goes with the first term? Negative two. OK, so I'm, I'm undistributing a 3x to the fourth right, from all those. So in other words, 3x to the fourth times what is going to give me 3x to the seventh? Well, 3 times what is? Three. One, right? So I guess, I, for, at least for the moment, let's put a one there, right? What about the x's? x to the fourth times what is x to the seventh? x, x cubed. X, x cubed, right? Because remember, when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So x to the fourth times x cubed, those are like bases. So that's x to the four plus three, x to the seventh, right? So we're going to get a one x to the cube, x to the third, x cubed. And so do we need that one there? No. No, no we don't, do we? We can, we can just get rid of that. Okay? What about the next term? 3 times what is negative 6? Negative 2. Negative 2. 
And x to the fourth times what is x to the fifth? The first. X to the first. OK, do I even need to write that one there? No, I don't. So I'll get rid of it. OK, and then finally, what about here? 3 times what is 12? And x to the fourth times what is x to the fourth? X. 1, right? So I've got 4 times 1, which is just 4. That's my answer. Does that make sense? OK, question? Heard a question over here? Heard a no over here. Yes. OK, question? OK, yeah, you were gone when we went through this first. Okay. So, so a good way to think about this, though, is, is when you're factoring out a greatest common factor, you're dividing away the biggest thing that you can from each term. But really, I think visually the way to think about it is I've just undistributed. What's the biggest thing that I could undistribute from each term? And that's a pretty hard example we just did. Okay. All right. So, so the next step was, was this. Uh, had you factor some trinomials. And we started with some pretty easy ones, right, if we have stuff like this. What if we want to factor x squared minus 16x plus 63? Okay. Now, what's the trick here? When I have a 1 in front of the x squared, like I do, these are pretty easy to do. I'm looking for the magic numbers that go with the x's in my factors. Because I know that I'm just unfoiling, right? I know that if I unfoil this, What do the first terms of each of those factors have to be? Something that adds up to 16? Well, OK, but, but the first ones are just going to be x's, right? Right, because I know first times first has to equal x squared, right? And so now the numbers that go with them. OK, now what do they have to do? They have to, they have to multiply to something and add to something. They have to add to negative 16. OK, good. They have to multiply to positive 63 and add to negative 16. Right, they multiply to C and add to B. Now, what we want to do, remember we talked about a process for this. So first of all, we can, we can figure out what the signs are. Right? If, they, if the numbers have to multiply to a positive, what does that tell you? Say it again. They're either both negative or they're both positive. But in this case, right, if they multiply to a positive, they're the same sign. But if they're also going to have to add to a negative, then they both must be negative. Right? I think that's what you're getting at. So we know that those are both minus signs. And what would the numbers be? They multiply to 63, and they add to 16. We know they're both negative, though, right? What would they be? Yeah, good. So 9 and 7, right? And that's just a matter of you just got to find them. There's, you know, just got to think. You kind of have to know your multiplication facts. But that's it. We're done. Okay? And I gave you uh, two assignments. One dealt with each of those two ideas. Okay, now today we're gonna we're gonna kind of combine those two ideas. So today we're gonna look at stuff like this. So how could we deal with a problem like, for example, factor okay, what about something like that? Now, things change when you have a not equal to 1. But in this case, we can make this one easier. Any ideas? Yes? Divided by 2. OK, good. We could factor out a 2, couldn't we? Right? And you always want to try to do that. You always want to see if you could, if there's a greatest common factor that you could undistribute. In this case, all three of those numbers are even, aren't they? So I know that, that 2 goes into all of them, right? So that's a fact. That's the greatest common factor. So if I undistribute a 2, what am I left with? x, x squared minus 16x. Minus 16x. Plus 63. Okay, And we just did that one, right? So now, once we factor that 2 out, this becomes an easy type of a, of a quadratic to factor, easy trinomial, right? Three term, tri means three, so does that make sense? Yeah. In the book, they'll, a lot of times they'll call these factoring quadratic trinomial, because they've got three terms, an x squared, an x, and a constant. Okay. 
But once you get to here, it's a piece of cake. Either it's going to work or it's not. And this one we decided didn't work. This one split up into x minus 9. We just did this problem, and x minus 7. And then out in front, I would just have that too. Okay? So it didn't end up being really any harder. We just had to get that greatest common factor out. Okay? Try one more of those. How about this guy? What if we have... Try that on your own, and then maybe check with your neighbor, just if you agree. Okay, so is there a greatest common factor? No. Three. Three. Okay, so I can undistribute a three, right? If I undistribute a three, whoops, if I undistribute a three, I'm left with what? Minus x. Okay, and that's now you you don't you haven't seen the other kind yet, but that's an easy kind because a is one. We're about to look at some examples where a is not one, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those uh, because they're a little harder, and we're going to have maybe a better way to approach those anyway. But you got to know how to do. You still have to know how. To, that's part of the standards for algebra two. You got to know how to factor those. So we're going to look at some easier ones. But those are harder. Even the easier ones where A is not 1 are still harder. You'll agree. Yes? Okay, so, well, now, when we're factoring, we're trying to break this apart as far as we can. So you can't until it's unbreakably small pieces. So I took a 3 out. Now, the question is, is this factor right here unbreakable, or can I break it apart? I can't, right? Now, I can always try, because now, if I eliminate that 3, this is the kind that on that second assignment that I just gave you, right? This, these are the kind where I know if they work, they're going to fit that pattern, correct? I have to find two numbers that multiply to negative 6, negative six and add to negative one. negative 1. Yes, sir? Negative 3 and positive 2. Good. So we get a negative 3 and a positive 2. But... When you're inputting the answer, that's not correct. This is correct, because we also have that constant factor of 3 that's out front. So this got broken into three pieces, a constant multiplier out front and two smaller factors, right? Okay. Now, though, I'm going to give you one. Look at this one. This is a little different. Let's try one like this. What if we have 2x squared? Uh, here, i gotta, I'm going to take one out of the book. Say like this, how about? Okay, what about that? Is there a greatest common factor there? No, there is not, is there? Okay, we're 
we're stuck. And so we got to have something else to do. We have to have another strategy. Okay, now you need to watch this one very closely. This looks like a lot of stuff, but it's really not that big a deal. So I, I, absolutely, this is a time where you just got to, you got to just really plug in. Okay, so here's, here's what you do. When you're stuck with a situation where you have a trinomial where A is not equal to 1, and I can't factor out a greatest common factor and save the day like I did in those last examples, then you resort to a strategy called A times C, then split B. Okay, that's what we do. That sounds a little weird. Here's what you do with that. So this is written in standard form. What are the values of A, B, and C in that quadratic expression? A is 2, right? Good. What's B? And C is, okay, everybody knows how we got that, right? Okay. So then we're going to find the product of A times C. What is the product of A times C? 6. Okay. So now we're going to play the same kind of a number game we played before. But sometimes these numbers get bigger. We want to find products of AC that add to B. Okay, so we want to find products of, of A, or excuse me, factors of AC, right? Factors of AC that add to that add to B. So numbers that multiply to six and add to seven. So six and one in this case, right? And and this ended up being a pretty easy one. So this splits apart into 6 and 1. Now, here's what we do with that, though. This is the part that's a little bit different. We're not done. Like in the old examples, once you had that, you were essentially done. There's more work to do here in this case. What we do then, once we have that information, we're going to take the original expression. And we're going to split the middle term. So we're going to end up with a total of four terms instead of three. The middle one's going to get split into two pieces, OK? And then when we do that, we're going to, we're going to have these four things added together, these four pieces. We're going to group the first two together and the last two together. And we're going to follow this little process. And it's guaranteed to work if you can find the magic numbers that multiply to AC and add to B. This whole process is absolutely guaranteed to work every time. If you can't find those numbers, it doesn't factor, and you can just stop. So in this case, we split the six into a six and a uh, the seven into a six and a one, right? So that means I'm going to take this seven x, and I'm going to break seven up seven x into either six x plus x or x plus six x. It doesn't matter which one; it makes no difference. It, and you know, it really doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and just put the 6x first and the x second. Okay? The first term and the third and the last term stay the same. So the, the 2x squared stays a 2x squared. The 3 stays a 3. Okay? Wait, it doesn't but, matter where you put in the 6x. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I put the 6x first and the x second or vice versa. But I well, have I mean, to. like the spots that you put on. Oh, they have, okay, they have to go in the middle two spots. The, first, the x squared term still goes first and the constant still goes last. But the two x terms are going to get split in either order. It makes no difference. But I have to split them with the magic numbers that I found. Okay? Question so far? Okay? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first group. We're going to ignore everything else, except we're just going to focus on the first group. Okay, inside, and with the first group, we're going to break this apart into a greatest common factor and what we'll just call a leftover factor. Okay, so whatever's left over when we undistribute the greatest common factor. And you guys are good at this. You've had some practice. What is the biggest thing that divides into both 2x squared and 6x? Well, what's the number part? 2. Everybody agree? OK. And what about the variable? x. x to the 1 is all we can take out. OK. Any questions? And please raise your hand if you have a question. Because if you do, other people do also. 
Okay? Okay, so far so good. Now, what's going to be left over when we undistribute that 2x? 2x times what would be x squared? x squared. Just x, right? The number part, 2 times 1 is 2, and x times what is x squared? x. OK? What about the second term? 2x times what would be 6x? 3. 3. Three. Good. Make sense? OK, now, now you're, you're almost done, really. Now it's, it's from here on out, it's really very simple. Because you always know that whatever you get for your leftover over here, we're going to do the same stuff to the second group. The second group, we're going to break apart into a greatest common factor and a leftover. But here's the part that makes it easy. Whatever your leftover is from the first group, it has to be duplicated in the second group. They have to be the same. So the way you, the way you do this problem when you're actually doing the work you're just automatically, whatever you get for the leftover there, you immediately just write it there. And then the only question remaining is, what would have to go out front? What could I distribute to x plus 3 to get back the whole second group, x plus 3? And the answer in this case is just 1, isn't it? Right? This is already equal to that, so that means that the greatest common factor was just a 1. Make sense? Okay. Now, now we, we're, we're done. But how do you write the answer? Here's how you write the answer. Okay, we're going to take, we've got this first group that consists of a red factor times a blue factor, the way I've got them written, right? Red times blue. We've got the second group that's written as a red factor times a blue factor, and they're being added together, right? Are there, is there a common factor in each group? Well, yeah, the blue one. Right? That's the one that we said had to be the same. And so I can undistribute the blue factor from each of the two groups. Right? So if I do that, if I take this x plus 3, this quantity x plus 3, because it's in parentheses, we can just treat it as one thing. It's just a factor. It's one factor. We'll undistribute that. And if we undistribute the x plus 3, what is left? Well, x plus 3 is being multiplied by 2x in the first group, right? Did everybody see that? So we're going to get a 2x. And then what about in the second group? It's being it's multiplied by a plus 1. You see that? So, so there's your answer. That's it. You just factored it. OK? Was that last? The last step, in a way, is almost the trickiest, isn't it? Hardest to see. Did, did, did everybody let, let, give me a one to five on that last step? Did that make sense what we did? How we broke that apart? So let, let, let me say that one more time. I say it two ways. Okay, so how do we get the question is here's what I'm talking about. How do we get from there down to there, right? Here's how you think about it now. I'm, I'm, I know that th this looks kind of complicated. Don't get don't get sidetracked. Everybody face up here, please. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, but if I look at this first group, the first group is really just the factor 2x times the factor x plus 3. The second group that's being added to that is the factor 1 times the factor x plus 3. Are any of those common? Meaning, can I undistribute them? Yeah, the x plus 3. So if I divide away or undistribute the x plus 3, here's how you can kind of do it on paper. You can say when I... When I pull that x plus 3 away from each group, if I just cover it up, what's left over? 2x plus 1. That's the other factor. Okay? So basically, the whole time you're putting the greatest common factor ahead of everything left. Exactly. Just flip right. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah. Okay. Now, let's try another one of these, though. Okay, question? Well, it doesn't make, honestly, it doesn't make any, once you get there, it doesn't make any difference. But it, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. But but the way we talk about it, it would make sense to put that first because it's the greatest common factor in each group. Okay, another one. Try this. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. So that was a good, uh,
Okay, let me have your attention up here, please. So here's here, what I want to do, and this is just kind of it for the rest of the day. This is all we're going to do today. What I want to do, let's go through one more of these kind of together. You know, you, you work on a step, and then we'll kind of get back together, and you work on the next step. And then at the end of the day, I'd like to see if, if, if you maybe partnered up with the neighbor, if, if you can get through one of these all on your own. Okay? So now, looking at this here, what's the first, what's the first thing we always want to try? Factor. Okay, well, can I say it again? Is there a greatest common factor? Because if there is, this could be a lot easier. If we go back and look at the previous examples, wasn't that a lot easier than the process we just went through? Agreed? Well, if you don't, if you're not careful with this, if you just say, ah, A is equals 3, it's not 1, and you do A times C, then split B, I mean, it's it'll work, but it's a long process, right? You always want to see, first of all, can I factor out a greatest common factor so I'm left with an easy factoring problem rather than a hard one, right? Okay, so what about our new problem? Is there a common factor? No. Greatest common factor is one, agreed? So we're stuck, all right? So we got to find the magic numbers. Now, how do I find the magic numbers? What's this process called? A times Good. A times C, then split B. Okay, so see if we can find, what's A times C? 30. Okay. So I want to find numbers that do what? Multiply to? 30. 30 and add to? 17. 17. Oh, okay, and people are seeing it. 17 and 2, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, and that, that might take, I mean, that's not, that's not going to always be automatic. That might take you a little while, but that's, you can find those numbers, right? Okay, so now see if you can get this thing written out as two separate groups, as group one plus group two. That's the first, first challenge. Okay, so uh, suggestions. What, how are we going to do this then? We want to split this up into group one and group two, right? So that's going to look like that. What are the contents of group one? First term. Okay, good. 3x squared plus 15x, sure. I could also put a 2x there, right? But let's say we put 15. Then now, don't for, a lot of times people forget this plus sign in the middle. Don't forget it. There's a plus sign. It's the group one plus group two. Now, what are the contents of group two? Good. Two x plus ten. Good. So now, where, where do we focus our attention? Where, where are we going to focus all our attention now? Okay. And which one are we looking at? First one. We can we can forget about everything else. All we're worried about now is. All we're worrying about now is group one, right? Okay, so group one. Group one gets split apart into a greatest common factor, right? Three. And a leftover. Okay, what is the greatest common factor of group one? Three X. Three X, right? Good. Three X. Okay, so take a second. Let's make sure. Everybody's on that page. What I'm going to ask for next is what's the leftover? X plus five. Everybody see that? X plus five. Okay. Okay. That that's the, that's how we get to five, right? Because now if you think about this, the biggest number that divides into three and fifteen is three. The biggest power of x is x. But if I redistribute that, three times what is three? One x times what is x squared? So I get an x in that first part, right? 3 times what is 15? 5. x times what is x? 1. So I just get a plain old 5 there, 5 times 1, right? Okay, good. 
All right, so now we can go ahead and focus on that second group. And remember the pattern that we have with that. Whoops, there's my plus sign. And the second one is going to get broken apart into a greatest common factor and a leftover. But what has to be true of the leftovers? It has to be the same. So I know right away, whoops, I can write that as x plus 5. It has to be. So then the only question is, what would I need to distribute to the x plus 5 to get to x plus 10? Just plain old 2, isn't it? Right? OK, does that make sense? OK, so now, can anybody tell me what my actual final answer is, grouped into two pieces? Times 3x plus 2, right? And we're done. All right, good job.